First of all, there is terrible news coming out of Italy every day, and Bergamo is at the center of it. What is the situation right now? I work in Bergamo, I'm a medical doctor, and I'm a health director of a hospital in Bergamo. Uh, the situation, uh, I can say, exploded uh, towards the end of uh, February. Uh, myself, uh, I did the first uh, test for coronavirus in a nurse that was working in our nursing home for elderly people on the 26th of February. And after five days, we got the result, it was positive. But already uh, six or seven elderly people started having fever and pneumonia in that nursing home where the nurse was working. And from there, it exploded everywhere. So uh, we did not have time, enough time for preparedness and we had to deal with the emergency situation that really exploded in a few days. And uh, now the cases uh, arose in the past two weeks and uh, still there are uh, new cases, but I hope we'll reach a plateau, uh, hopefully next week. I mean, you use the word exploded, that is exactly right. When you think that your first case was only on the 26th of February, and yet we look at the terrible was, death rate coming. That was the first identified case, because uh, uh, the nurse had fever on that day, and I asked her some questions and uh, discovered that she uh, was in contact with a person uh, whose mother was admitted in a hospital close to Bergamo, uh, because of the virus. So I decided to do the test and that was the first identified case in my hospital. From your perspective, why do you think it has taken a grip so quickly? Is it because, as you said, you weren't prepared? Is it because of the elderly population? Why do you think it has taken such a fierce grip in your area? I think only later on we, we could uh, maybe understand why it happened like this. After China, we had cases in Lodi and Cremona, that are two cities in the northern area of Italy, 100 kilometers and 70 kilometers uh, uh, respectively from uh, Bergamo, and then Bergamo, and now Brescia, which is uh, like 30 kilometers from Bergamo. It's difficult to understand why in, uh, in those cities especially. Um, we know that uh, since the mid-February, uh, uh, the cases were uh, uh, increasing in that area, in Bergamo area. But still there was no um, rules and norms limiting the movement of the population. So the population continued uh, moving around and the cases were increasing, increasing, increasing. When uh, all the measures were taken, it was good, I think, for the rest of Italy, Milan and other cities, the rest of Italy. But unfortunately, Bergamo area and uh, like other cities, Lodi, Cremona, were already affected. So for, for us in Bergamo, it was too late. I hope for the rest of Italy and for the rest of the world, this experience would teach something so you will be able to act uh, promptly and uh, earlier. And uh, because the only thing to limit the virus is to limit the movement of the population. Because even in our hospital, we limited the people entering the hospital only for urgent uh, visits. We limited visits to inpatients. Uh, we did a triage at the entrance of the hospital to see if people had symptoms or uh, contacts with positive cases. We tried our best to prevent, but when you have the virus spread all over, around uh, in, in the neighborhood area and uh, uh, in the city, then uh, really you can't control it because even the health workers, they live in the same place, they get the virus at home, they get the virus everywhere and inside so, the hospital. And so what has been the impact on 
the hospitals there on health workers like yourself? How have they managed? Of course, uh, there is a lot of work to do in this moment. Uh, we are using personal protective equipment, uh, but uh, uh, like some health workers, like myself, I was one of the first ones to get uh, the virus. Uh, I cannot say why I got it, because I used the mask and the gloves and uh, all the protective equipment to visit the people. But what I can say is there are some people that are asymptomatic or with mild symptoms. And uh, some people are your colleagues, even medical doctors, nurses, your colleagues in a healthcare facility. So when you are with them, Usually, you don't protect yourself enough because uh, you, you feel safe. So the only thing uh, between uh, colleagues or people is uh, if you feel sick, you have fever, you have something, you need to stay home immediately because when you have symptoms, you can spread the virus. So usually, when you get uh, uh, some fever, you take some pills, uh, tablets, and then you go to work. In this moment, Everybody should avoid it. Uh, if you feel sick, you have fever, you need to stay home immediately because otherwise you can transmit it to other people, especially colleagues. And usually you don't protect yourself when you are with colleagues. And describe for me what that terrible combination of a really rapidly spreading virus and doctors and health workers being infected at the same time, what sort of pressure is that putting on your health service, your hospitals? It's putting a lot of pressure. Why? Because uh, a health worker uh, with the virus can transmit it also to the other people that uh, the health worker is supposed to take care of to cure. And uh, some of these people are elderly people with other diseases, so it becomes really dangerous for them. And you, health worker, you become like a vector for the virus to spread. And um, there is a lot of psychological uh, pressure because uh, you feel guilty because of that, but sometimes you can't avoid it because you don't know you have the virus. And uh, the only thing is to use all protection. In our area now we say we are all positive. We believe we are all positive and we have to behave. If we are all positive, we all have the virus and we, we have to try to avoid to transmit it to others. Uh, you have two things to take into consideration. There are guidelines and there is psychological emotional status. So we are following WHO guidelines and uh, which are saying that you, you need to use only surgical mask to take care of people with the coronavirus unless you do some uh, invasive procedure that produce aerosol. So in that case, you need advanced masks, which are filtered masks. But now, nowadays, in our context, it is impossible to say so to my colleagues, to the health workers, because the fear is too high. And so everybody wants to feel protected as much as possible. But also, sorry to interrupt you, but also you talk about the psychological impact. We've been running films from hospitals in your area. You can see health workers are doing absolutely everything they can, but they're also being forced to make very tough decisions about who they can treat and who they can't treat. They're seeing significant numbers of patients dying. I just wonder, what is the long-term psychological impact of that on them, on you, in fact? Now we are in the emergency, so there is a reaction, a reaction. Uh, as you said, this impact, impact, we will see it later on, after the emergency, because now you don't have even time to think. You have just to act, act, and act quickly. Uh, we have uh, activated a psychological service in our hospital for all the people they want to use it, our health workers, they can call and talk with the psychologists. 
But I believe, as you say, that this service will be even more important after the emergency, because right now you need to take care of everybody and run everywhere. Me, I, I have to stay isolated at home because I have the virus, I can spread it to others. But in my role of coordination, I'm working from home, trying to coordinate with my colleagues, with the institutions and, and all the things I can do from distance. My colleagues are all running to take care of the people. But after this emergency, when we will realize what was happening, how many people died, and we have, as I said, a, we have a hospital, and next to the hospital there is a nursing home for elderly people. For these people, really, when they become positive, we can just give some support to them. We cannot even send them to intensive care units because uh, above 80 years old, they can't go there in this moment. So this is very sad and painful for a health worker because your uh, mission is to save lives. And la right now, in some cases, you have to just give some support. What would your message be to the UK? We're said to be two weeks behind you. What would you be saying to us now? What would your message be? Stay home. Don't move. Because this is the only way to prevent the spread of the virus. At the beginning, we were also thinking this is a, a simply a flu. It's not a flu. It's giving a lot of pneumonia and it's very dangerous for a lot of people, elderly ones, but even younger ones. I have colleagues of 45, 50 years old in intensive care units. So the only way is to stay home and for healthcare facilities, be prepared. Be prepared with personal protective equipment, much more than you think you need. And secondly, increase the beds for intensive care units and for infectious disease. These are all the only way for preparedness if you have enough time and train, educate the health workers on the preventive measures. Don't give them for granted because in normal times we forget those measures. So we need to be remembered all the time. Wash hands and don't cough on your hands and use masks and all these things. You need to repeat, repeat and train all, every day. And finally, do you see any lights at the end of the tunnel or when you look to the future, do you still feel fear? I believe, uh, at least in our area in Bergamo, the, the worst is happening now. So I believe after this, we cannot experience worse than this. So we, we will start recovering and uh, uh, coming out from this situation. Uh, from the people that are still waiting for this to come, you have enough time to prepare and uh, to, in, in order for this to be to have less impact that the, than the impact that it had on us. Sylvia Benigni, thank you so much for talking to us today. Thank you. Thank you.